Hello and welcome to Town Meeting TV. My name is Bobby Lucier, and I'm your host for the program today. Uh, we're joined in the studio by Robin Palmer, who is the new Education and Civic Engagement Coordinator at the Secretary of State's office. This is a new position established by the Secretary of State, Sarah Copeland Hansis, part of an effort to advance civic education across the state. Robin, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So, uh, Education and Civic Engagement Coordinator. Um, what does that mean? What kind of work are you going to be doing? Uh, well, we have three major initiatives as sort of that were part of the creation of the position. So the first one is focusing on K-12 education. Um, that could look like a lot of different things. So the first part of what I'm going to do is create a teacher advisory group to help us understand. You know, we want to highlight the good work that's already being done and share resources, but also identify any gaps that may exist and mm -hmm. see where we can play a role in helping to fill them. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, there's, we definitely see a space where we'll probably be doing some, like a town meeting day lesson or doing some resources for the state house uh, field trips and things like that. But really that group is gonna help guide that direction. Yeah, and that's a group of teachers, yep. public school teachers from around the state. Which we are currently recruiting for. That's so great. that's really exciting. Um, yeah, that will be a, that will be really exciting. Mm -hmm. And it might be end up being two subgroups based on the different age age groups. Okay. And then another big project is going to be creating a voter guide for the 2024 election. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, civic engagement in schools is important, but we also want to be able to provide education to the larger population and creating a voter guide that will make voting easier mm -hmm. is a big priority and have you know informed voting make that easier right. uh, and then the third project is more broad community outreach and that's very much still taking shape but I think uh, you know the the thing that the secret that secretary Copeland Hansis has said over and over is that uh, her sort of mantra is democracy is about working together to solve problems as a group that we can't solve individually. Yeah. And so I think getting that message out to the community in whatever shape that might be mm -hmm. uh, is a big part of what our community engagement, like our broader initiatives will be. And as partners uh, present themselves, then we'll be exploring all those options. Awesome. That sounds like really, really great work. I'm jealous. Um, <laughs> so, Robin, how did you get into this position? What were you doing before? Because this is a new position, right? You yep. just started. Uh, it's a few, new position. A few weeks ago. And it's yep. new to me. I'm great. rounding out the end of my first month here. This awesome. is week four. So, um, for the last 10 years, uh, or almost 10 years, I had been running an AmeriCorps VISTA program out of the Vermont Agency of Human Services. So, um, civic engagement from another angle, really focusing on like the volunteerism piece and uh, community service. Uh, prior to that, I ha my background uh, like academically was in higher ed administration and I was um, you know, focused on service learning and civic engagement from that perspective. But my very first job, uh, I graduated from Temple University in Philadelphia and my very first job out of undergrad was helping to coordinate educator programs at the National Constitution Center. Okay. And so that felt like kind of just like the first thing that came up after school, but now it feels really like full circle. So relevant, yeah. And it's yeah. fun to be coming back and you know familiarizing myself with some of those organizations and groups and things. Right, yeah, and there's this thread of civic education in, your, in all of your work, that's really yeah. cool. Um, so we mentioned this is a new position. Uh, why was your position established? Is there a specific problem or set of problems that you're hoping to address through, um, through your work? Yeah, you know, the secretary um, was a legislator for many years mm -hmm. before running. And then I think through that work and also well out on the campaign trail, she just sort of kept uh, running into people who didn't know how to vote or didn't uh, see themselves as voters. She tells this great story of running into a a student who said, oh, well, my family is not a voting family. And mm. like the way they said it was like it was really part of their identity. Mm. And, you know, in a lot of ways, Vermont does well in like the national rankings and things like that for 
voter engagement, but I think she really saw this need to reach all of Vermonters, yeah. not just the ones helping <laughs> boost our, our mm -hmm. numbers and help shift those mindsets. So like when you run into people, like understanding why aren't they a family of voters? Yeah. And is that because there's some trepidation around the mechanics and they don't really know how? Is it that they don't feel like their vote will matter? Or is it that um, there's not a candidate that feels inspiring to them or um, a issue that they're passionate about? So kind of looking at it from a really broad perspective, I think she saw a lot of need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, you mentioned already some of those potential barriers to voting and becoming engaged, not just voting, but being engaged in the civic process, the democratic process. Are there any of those that the secretary or you are particularly kind of honing in on or, or, or recognize as some of the key barriers that Vermonters are really facing in participating in the democratic process? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I guess maybe I got ahead of myself there on that answer a little yeah. bit, but I think those are... It, you know, it might be education, it might be uh, interest level, or it might be trust that their participation is going to make a difference. Yeah. Um, there's sort of a wide variety there, so that'll be fun to, yeah. to tackle. But yeah. I think um, I'm going to look at my notes for this one because it just it was a headline in the news yesterday. Mm -hmm. The Washington Post wrote an article and the headline was... Um, Students' understanding of history and civics is worsening. Mm. And it was a, um, it said that only 22% of eighth graders nationwide tested proficient in civics in the mm. most recent study. So that just came out yesterday. Um, obviously, some of that could be COVID related. They've seen that with a lot of standardized testing. But I think, um, you know, there's sort of the reaching young people before they become voters feels very important. Mm -hmm. And so seeing scores like that and kind of knowing that there's been less of an emphasis on civics in schools feels important to get ahead of. And also just like, let's make it easy for teachers who have a lot on their mm -hmm. plate. You know, we want it to be approachable and accessible, but then also just um, not just focusing on students, but the broader community too. Yeah, I, I saw that article and that, that report and it was alarming. And I also, and I saw it and then, um, my colleague Lauren Glenn Davidian sent it to me, and I said, "That's I'm so glad that we're having Robin in <laughs> tomorrow to talk about to talk about this." I mean, because, I wasn't glad to see the results, I mean, yes. but it was nice to have something yeah. concrete to mention, yeah. so the timing yeah. worked. Yeah, it was it was pretty alarming, um, and I want to jump because you mentioned that part of your job is focused on developing a statewide civics curriculum, and um, I think. A, p a part of that is making civics and to an extent bureaucracy and the democratic process interesting and meaningful to mm -hmm. young people and young students. So how do you think about that? How do you think about making that, uh, that process interesting and, and, and engaging? Yeah. Well, one thing just to clarify is we aren't going to be doing like a mandated statewide curriculum. Um, it's very much going to be resources mm -hmm. um, and hoping to make things, like I was saying, accessible, make it easy, make it affordable. You know, there's really cool projects uh, nationally if you Google civic education, but it's like, can you afford transportation to get your class to DC? Can you, you know, like all of these yeah. things. So what can we do here in Vermont to help uh, fill those gaps in a way that's that's affordable? But we're, we aren't like necessarily saying that we're gonna right. present a full curriculum yes. just okay. to clarify yes, it's but resources I think, that, that teachers and there may be on. some pieces yeah. in there but right. um, you know I think the way you make it interesting is just really trying to make it relevant mm -hmm. and to to the lives of kids and like mm -hmm. what do they care about and helping them realize they have a voice I it's you know I've been in this role like I said for just about a month and there's been different youth activism days on the state house mm -hmm. lawn and you know so it in some ways, you're like, okay, things are good. Yeah. <laughs> there are still, um, there's still a lot of youth engagement, but making that available to everyone, not just people who are in districts that can afford the bus to, to Montpelier for yeah. the day or have a teacher that's super passionate about it and willing to spend all that extra time, but right. like just, you know, making it available more broadly. Mm -hmm. And I think focusing on problem solving, like seeing democracy as a tool for problem solving and not as 
bureaucracy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think obviously there's there's some of that, but you know, I'm sure there's um, examples we can point to of you know the long slog being worth it too. Yeah. And so trying to find those, highlight those, and just make people understand that their voice can be heard. Yeah, yeah, I love that, making democracy a tool for problem solving, that, that's, that's really great. Um, it's such a wide ranging job that you're, that you're working on. Um, who do you anticipate will be some of the key partners that you're working with? You mentioned teachers, um, who else do you, do you think will play a key role in, in your work? Yeah, it's been kind of remarkable, all of the uh, the meetings I've had so far and like the broad array of folks that I've talked to. But, um, you know, one morning I talked to the Vermont Association for Social Studies and then um, talked to the Vermont Historical Society. So some of those people that are already engaged in the K-12 to area. Um, we're hoping to always continue our partnership with the uh, Vermont Humanities and the Center for Cartoon Studies. The previous Secretary of State put together the Freedom and Unity comic, which mm -hmm. we're you know really still excited about yeah, and great. get a lot of interest in. So the thinking of ways we can grow that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know the Vermont Community Foundation has a newly stated um, priority area around democracy and community leadership. So we're excited to see the work that they do with that. And then I think, um, you know, the other big one is trying to partner with organizations who might be working with more underrepresented folks. So that might be the Department of Corrections or folks working with populations that are currently experiencing homelessness, um, just really trying to be accessible and work to solve a problem yeah, uh, with yeah. folks who are working with those groups. Yeah, awesome. That is. That is an all-star lineup of partners. So <laughs> it's a fun. It's been a pretty fun job. Yeah. so far. <laughs> that's really that's really great. Yeah, your your work is so important, especially right now. You know, we're seeing that democracy and democratic systems are sort of in the news more than they are than they than they have been in the past. Uh, does the Secretary of State's office see democracy itself as being under threat in Vermont right now? You know, I think she would say that yes. I think mm -hmm. she does. I think that's part of why this position was created, and and frankly, why she wanted to run in mm -hmm. the first place. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that Vermont does do well. Like we, as state government, like our elected officials, like you'll see them at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. You can um, access uh, lots of information through public media. You can go sit in the state house and learn what's going on, but paired with the national kind of rhetoric mm -hmm. around not trusting the government and everything mm -hmm. being called into question, like we want to highlight the ways that Vermont still is different yeah. and help people feel um, feel encouraged to participate mm -hmm. and you know, know that there are uh, modes of participation open yeah. still. And so I think, um, not to raise huge alarm bells, uh, you know, Vermont is doing pretty well in some ways, but I think uh, getting out ahead of it, making sure our children are understanding what they can through civics and schools and, you know, continuing to build on that is really an important and that's, you know, kind of why I'm in this role. Yeah. <laughs> but also just, you know, there's been such kind of an overwhelming positive response, which I've really appreciated as I've come in the first, month, but I think it's not just because people are friendly, it's because people see this as, you know, people yeah. across the state see this as something that's really important and yeah. something they want to partner on and really see make a difference. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a huge need and there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm around the work that you're doing, including at Town Meeting TV. We're really excited about the, the work that you're, that you're taking on. So thank you. Thank you for doing it. Yeah. Um, how can people get involved in your work or get in touch with you? Um, yeah, what, you know, what, where 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 is the avenue for those new partners that you don't know about yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think the easiest way is probably just to go to our website and there's a contact the secretary uh, inbox and the, those come to me. So like I, you know, I'll see I'll see those and be able to to get back in touch. So that's probably I haven't memorized my. Uh, my new cell phone number yet <laughs> okay. at the job, but I think that's that okay. that's probably the the best way. Awesome, great! Uh, I think that wraps up our conversation, Robin. Cool. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us. Yeah, thanks Palmer. for having me.
is the new uh, Education and Civic Engagement Coordinator for the Vermont Secretary of State's office. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in to Town Meeting TV, where we continue to open the doors of local democracy and connect you and your neighbors with uh, the leaders in your community. You can find this program and others on our website, ch17.tv, or on our Town Meeting TV YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and sharing Town Meeting TV. Have a great day.